tracking macros for beginners. For starters, what even is a macro? So a macro stands for macronutrients. Now these are protein, carbohydrates, and fats. There is also alcohol, but let's leave that one out for now. Here's a super simple rundown of what they do. Protein. So one gram of protein equals four calories. Protein is the most important macronutrient of them all, and it's super important for muscle growth and recovery and the repair and growth of our skin, hair, nails, things like that. Carbs. One gram of carbohydrates also equals four calories. Carbs are needed for recovery. They're the body's first energy source, and they're also great to fuel hard sessions. And lastly, we have fats. Now, one gram of fat equals nine calories. So this is just over double carbs and protein. A small amount of fats are needed in our diet to help hormone function and to help us absorb some key vitamins. So now we know a little about what they do, let's talk about tracking them. To track them, the easiest way is to simply use an app. Now, I personally use MyFitnessPal. That's just because I've been using it for years and I'm very used to it, but you can use any of these ones I'm gonna chuck on screen now. You can use any app to track your macros that you like and that you prefer. So of course, once you have your app, you wanna chuck in your starting calories and your macronutrients. We're gonna to touch on what to focus on in a little bit. And also it's super important to keep in mind that don't stress if you're not hitting them to the T. If you're new to this and you're a beginner, you're not gonna hit those macros or even your calorie targets to the T on a daily basis. And this is why it is important to track macros and calories because you're gonna quickly learn about foods, what's in foods, how much you're eating on a daily basis and so on. So if you are a complete beginner, you're very new to tracking calories and macros or this is your first time, here's what I highly recommend. Just focus on tracking your calorie intake and your daily protein intake. The reason is it will make it much easier to stick to. It's gonna feel less overwhelming just trying to hit calories and protein rather than trying to hit calories, protein, carbs, and fats. And it's also gonna give you a little bit more freedom with your food choices on a daily basis. And on the flip side of that, if you're not new to tracking macros, then I would highly recommend aiming for all three macronutrients if you wanna squeeze every last drop out of your progress, your training, and your performance. Now, when it comes to actually physically tracking your foods, there's lots of ways you can do this. And you can also do this raw weight or you can do this cooked weight. Raw weight is always gonna be the most accurate, especially for carbohydrates and meats, because when you do cook them in different various ways, say you cook it in the pan, say you air fry it, the weight of the food after is gonna fluctuate a little bit. But in saying that, it doesn't matter too much as long as the way you're tracking it is accurate and you're consistent with it. So for example, if you're searching in your, your app, cooked white rice, then obviously you're gonna weigh it out cooked and you're gonna keep doing it like that. But if you're scanning the barcode and it's showing you raw weight, then obviously you're gonna want to use the raw weight. Where I do see clients and people making mistakes is they are tracking cooked weight and they're using raw weight or vice versa. So for example, if you're tracking 100 grams of pasta raw weight, but then you're only eating 100 grams of pasta cooked weight, you're gonna be eating way, way less. So for example, something like pasta, 100 grams raw weight will basically equate to nearly 2.5 times when it's cooked so you'll probably be about 250 grams cooked weight so you can see if you get those muddled up you're gonna either completely be under eating or you're gonna be completely over eating and this could screw up your progress when it comes to weighing out raw ingredients you can do this by having your bowl or plate on the scale and pouring the ingredients in or you can place the packaging on the scale hit zero on your kitchen scale and then pour it into the bowl slash plate now a common thing that I hear is weighing your food is super tedious and it's time consuming. Well, to be honest, if you did it how I just showed you, it's literally gonna take an extra 30 to 60 seconds each meal, if that. And for the outcome that you're gonna get of insane results and progress, it's kind of a no-brainer, in my personal opinion. Another common question that I get, which is a very good question, is if I am making the food in large portions, let's say I'm cooking for the family, how do I know how much I'm actually having? So the simplest way to do this would be to basically cook the entire portion of meat or canned beans, smarto, whatever you're cooking, cook all of it at the same time, and then when it comes to actually tracking it, there's three different ways you can do it. The first one is to divide all meals equally and then you can simply work out your portions. So for example, if you cook a kilo of meat and you want to divide that into four, then you simply know that you're just going to have 250 grams of meat. Now obviously if you and your family all eat different portion sizes, which you probably do, you'd probably want to do number two or number three. The second option, which is probably the easiest, is to just weigh your portions out cooked and then you can just track it as cooked weight in my fitness power or whatever app you're using. The third one, which is also pretty easy, is simply weigh all of the food uncooked or for example, if you're just cooking a whole packet of meat, use that as your reference guide, cook it all, and then simply just divide it out into the portions that you want and basically guesstimate how much you think that you had. Now, obviously to be accurate, number one or number two is gonna be a lot more accurate and precise. If the recipes have multiple ingredients, you just do the same thing. So let's take chili con carne, for example. P.S. This is how I would also meal prep in large quantities. So let's say you wanna have this for the next 
three days. Let's say you wanna have 200 grams of mince, say 50 grams of chili beans and 50 grams of diced tomatoes. What I would then simply do is just cook up 600 grams of mince, 150 grams of chili beans and 150 grams of diced tomatoes. And then once you've cooked it all, you can simply just divide that into three different containers and you're good to go. This is the fastest and easiest way to cook food in bulk or to meal prep and to still hit your targets to the teeth. The last thing I wanna to touch on is a very common question I get and it's a great question. How do I know food that I'm tracking is actually accurate? Because for example, if you simply type in chicken breast to MyFitnessPal or whatever app you're using, as you can see, there are tons of different options and a lot of them have different calories and macros. So it can get kind of confusing. So the easiest way to make sure your food is accurate is to use one of these three methods. The first one, which I personally do all the time is scan the barcode wherever possible. Pretty much all foods, unless they're like fruits or veggies, or if you get your meats from a butcher, they're probably gonna have a barcode on it. If you scan that and it comes up, 95% of the time, you're gonna be pretty good to use that and it will be accurate. The second thing you can do is to simply double check by Googling the food item. So let's take that chicken breast, for example. You would Google chicken breast, 100 gram calories, and then click enter. What you wanna look for, it usually comes up on the right-hand side, is USDA. The third thing you can do is whenever you're searching raw ingredients, so fruits, veggies, things like that, if you type in nut tab, N-U-T-T-A-B for the ingredient, this will be very accurate. This is basically because nut tab means nutrient tables for use in Australia and New Zealand. Kind of similar to the USDA example we just spoke about. So that's the basics on how to track your calories and how to track macro. And like anything, it will take a little bit of time to get used to, but if you do this on a daily basis, before you know it, you're gonna know so much more about food than you did before. You're gonna know a lot more about your body as well and how it handles certain foods, how it digests certain amounts of foods and things like that. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.